train your cabin Read those books in a blink, oh yeah Grab yourself a hot drink cause you're watching how to train your Gavin Yep, that's me Hey guys, welcome back to How To Know Gavin. Today I am doing my July book haul video and I have over 30 books to show you so I'll get straight into it. Some of these you will have already seen on my TBR videos because, you know, I like to bump up books that are on my TBR that I've recently got, which I should not do. It is unfair to all the books that I've had for years and have not touched, but as always with my book haul videos, I will start with the books that were gifted to me and then the books that I bought. So the books that were gifted to me are really the ones that I got from publishers. I have a couple of ARCs in there as well. And then I will go into my middle grades that I bought. They're my young adult books that I bought and then the adult books that I bought. So let's get straight into it. So start off with the free books. <laughs> the Girl and the Witch's Garden by Erin Borman. This was in my Alcray Junior box for June. I do have an unboxing of this where I was Alphabet from Wicked and the theme for this one was Magic in Bloom. So it's perfect for that theme because as you can see by the cover it looks very gardeny. It gives me those kind of like secret garden vibes almost and Mary and the Witches flower vibes. So this is about a young girl who is sent to live with her grandparents I think or on her, it might just be her grandmother. Oh yeah so Piper is the main character and she is sent to live at Mallory Estate with her grandmother who is rumoured to be a witch. And I really want to read this one. I lost out to it on the Play Your TBR Right video. So I won't be reading it this month. But I do have plans to read it the following month in September. So I am very excited about this one. I was sent the finished copy of The Wild Way Home by Sophie Kirtley from the publisher Bloomsbury. This was the Waterstones book of the month for July. And this follows a young boy who gets sent back to the Stone Age and it has something to do with his brother. His brother is in hospital and he wants to find a way to save his brother, I believe it's about. I didn't get a chance to read this, unfortunately, but it is very short so I might be able to slot it in somewhere on one of my TBRs. Who knows? Knights of Media kindly sent me a proof of A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol. This came in a little bit late. It has already come out so you can get it in stores. This is about a young autistic girl called Addie and a very quirky Scottish village. And it kind of highlights the trials and tribulations of autistic children, neurodivergent children. Elle McNichol is a neurodivergent author so it'll be really interesting to read this one. It is very short but no doubt it will also be quite uplifting and also heartbreaking at the same time which is what I've heard from a lot of different reviews about this book. So thank you so much Knights of for sending me a proof copy of this. Even though it, it did take a while to get to me, I am so grateful. Thank you so much. I was also sent The Ten Riddles of Earth Quicksmith by Loris Owen from Firefly Press. Thank you so much Leone who was the person who sent me this one. And this one follows Kip who gets an invitation to this bizarre mansion. And I believe there is this decades old puzzle. Yeah, uh, there's like a treasure hunt that's um, like 400 years in the making kind of thing. But the main character has to solve riddles and puzzles in order to unlock the mysteries of this mansion. And it just seems really cool. I love the cover. I think this is also the final cover, but it also comes out in September. So do check that out when it comes out. I am reading this this month. This was in my August TBR video. So do check that video out if you haven't already. And yeah, it is a beautiful cover. Thank you so much Firefly Press and Leonie for sending me this one. The next two books are celebrating their book birthday today so happy book birthday to these two books they are publishing on august 6th the day i'm filming this this might be up a few days later but those two books are moonchild voyage of the lost and found by asia bushby and death set sail by robin stevens now moonchild voyage of the lost and found i literally just finished reading it i absolutely love this book this follows a young girl and it is kind of like in an arabian nights inspired world amira is a 12 year old girl who lives with her sea witch mothers they travel the world sort of on a ship and Amira also has a djinn and a djinn is like a companion and Amira's is a like a cat-like companion called Namur. A storm severely damages Amira's and her same mother's ship so she has to dock on land and she's really excited about this and I really do love this book I think it's amazing so check it out. Thank you so much to Egmont for sending me this and of course Death Set Sail by Robin Stevens. It is the ninth and final book in the Murdermost and Leader Like series. It has a very reflective but very beautiful goal 
cover as well as blue sprayed edges and the blue back. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous book. This is the final book in the Emergemost and Lady Like series which follows Daisy and Hazel. They have their own detective agency and I believe in this one they go to Egypt and they have to solve a mystery there and I am so excited to get to the final book. It's going to be fantastic I think. This sounds like a series that has just gotten better and better with age. I do absolutely love the covers of these books so thank you Puffin for sending me a copy of this. So on to the YA books that were sent to me. I got The Beast Warrior by Nahaku Yahashi. Push Compress kindly sent me this book. I'm so happy. It is huge. This is the sequel to The Beast Warrior, by the way. No, it's not. This is The Beast Warrior. This is the sequel to The Beast Player, which I read last year. To be honest, I can't really remember a lot of what happened in The Beast Player. I might have to reread that one before I read this one. But I do remember that the main character, um, she could communicate with beasts. <laughs> God, wow. I really do need to reread the first book. Oh, wow. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for sending me this one. I might have to read both of them back to back. It's huge though, it's it's huge, but I'm excited to read it. The next proof I got was Punching the Air by E.B. Zaboy and Yusef Salim. And this is a verse novel, it's a YA verse novel, and I had no idea about it. I was sent it by Harper Collins. this was a really lovely surprise. And they must have, you know, answered my prayers or something because I've been reading more books with verse. And this is a book in verse and I'm so excited about that. All I know about this is that it is about a boy who has been wrongfully incarcerated and it's also drawing on Yusef's own experiences as an incarcerated teen. This one comes out next month in September so do check it out when it comes out. And uh, yeah, excited to read it. It's first, so yeah, it's gonna be awesome. And the lovely people at Harper also sent me a finished copy of Loveless by Alice Osman. All I know about this is that I think it's about in a girl who's ace. Yeah, she's never had a crush on anyone, no boys, no girls, not a single person. What Alice Osman does so well is that she does write fantastic contemporary that really reflects the people of today. And I think this will be a really good one. I don't usually read contemporaries, but I did love Radio Silence when I read that last year. And I think Alice Osman is a very talented writer so again thank you so much Harper for sending me this copy and this was a surprise as well so yeah really looking forward to reading this one. Scholastic sent me a copy of Heartbreak Boys by Simon James Green and this one follows two boys who have both been dumped by their exes and I think they kind of come together and they try to get over their exes. I think there's also a camp that's like a campsite yeah with clapped out camper vans yeah they're, they're trying really hard to get over their exes I don't know, maybe, do they fall in love maybe? I don't know. Scholastic did send me this, I think because I am um, acknowledged in the acknowledgements. Thank you so much Simon James Green for putting me in the acknowledgements. I really appreciate it and I can't wait to read it. This is on my August TBR so I will be getting to it very soon. So yeah, excited to give this one a read. I have to give a huge thank you to Mary who sent me All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. I mentioned in a video that I was finding it really hard to get my hands on a physical copy of this. I listened to the audiobook back in June and I absolutely loved it so I was like, I really need to find this physically so I can have a copy of it and reread it when I want to and Mary had a spare copy and she was very nice enough to send me one so thank you so much Mary for sending me this. This is George M. Johnson's memoir. He does talk a lot about his experiences as a, a gay kid, as a gay teenager growing up and being black in his community and what his identity meant to him and all of those experiences that he had. A lot of these things I could relate to as a gay teenager as well. Well I'm not a gay teenager anymore but but when I was a gay teen, I went through a lot of the same things to do with my sexuality. So I found this such a great and eye-opening read. And I'm just so happy to have the final physical copy of this. So again, thank you so much, Mary, for sending me it. I really, really do appreciate it. And then the last proof I got is an adult book. And it's one that I'm really excited about to read. And it is in my like most anticipated upcoming 2020 releases. And that is The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. It has this very gorgeous cover with the gold foil clock in the middle. And it has, there's a silence like the gap between two ticks of a clock then she turns away unable to look at his face on the cover that's so cool and you know the betrayals by Bridget Collins and the back as well. Thank you again to Harper for sending me this book. I am so excited to read it. As I mentioned, Bridget Collins is the author of The Binding, which I read last year and really enjoyed. Let me just get the premise for you because I don't really know what this one is about. This one is set in an imaginary European country in the 1930s 
It's about a remote university where scholars gather to play a mystical game that combines poetry, music, maths and philosophy. So it sounds like it's going to be a little bit trippy I think, <laughs> but I really did enjoy the binding so I think I will enjoy this as well. Thank you so much for sending me a copy. I feel like I'm going to have to ditch all of my August TBR for this book, but we'll see how I get on. Okay, so onto the middle grade books that I bought. I will show the ones that I have definitely talked about before and that is the Cheetah Girls books by Deborah Gregory and there are 16 books in this series. These are the four bind ups, there are four books per bind up and I have the Cheetah Girls Live in Large, Super Duper Sparkle, Growl Power Forever and Off the Hook. And as you can see I am already halfway through with the first book because I am currently filming a Cheetah Girls reading vlog and I'm so excited. Can't wait for you guys to see the vlog. I absolutely love the Cheetah Girls movies growing up. I love the Disney Channel movies, especially the first two. The first two are definitely my life. The third one is okay but it doesn't have Raven Simone in it so it's not as good. But it's still there. It's still got some decent songs in it so I can't complain too much. But I do want a Cheetah Girls for just saying. But I did get all of these on eBay second hand so they're very old I mean you can see how yellow these pages are especially on the first one actually and when I turn the pages it has this crinkling sound Oops. yeah I decided to get these because I just really want to read all 16 of them it follows five girls in the Cheetah Girls book series the Cheetah Girls are best friends at school and they want to become the next big girl group they have big dreams big passions so I got these second hand off eBay very cheap Thank you very much. <laughs> I also bought The School for Good and Evil by Saman Chinani and this is the first book in the School for Good and Evil series and I have heard so many great things about this one. This is a lot of people's favourite middle grade series but every four years two children are stolen away from Gavaldon never to return. Most children fear being taken to the School for Good and Evil but not Sophie. She's dreamt all her life of being a princess and believes the school could be her chance. Her best friend Agatha has other ideas. When the two girls are taken, things don't quite go to Sophie's plan because sometimes the princess and the witch don't look like they do in fairy tales. So I believe the one who always wants to be a princess goes to the school for evil and the one who's like a bit more dark and mysterious goes to the school for good, something like that I think. It's like it flips that you know, stereotype <laughs> around. Um, so I'm excited to read it. I think it's gonna be great. It's on my August TBR, so let's see if I can get to it. I also picked up The Umbrella Mouse to the Rescue by Anna Farger, illustrated by Sam Usher. Usher, Usher. This is the sequel to The Umbrella Mouse, which was about a young mouse who, during World War II, I think it was World War II, her family are killed in a bombing in London, and she ends up having to try and get to Italy to find the rest of her relatives. And it was quite bizarre to follow a little mouse in a World War II London setting but it was I enjoyed the first book I'm looking forward to reading this one as well I believe they go to Paris because it has the Eiffel Tower and Notre Dame Cathedral on the cover so looking forward to that and seeing more of what Pip gets up to and the Secret Service I think it's Winston Churchill Secret Service of Animals they're like a bit of an animal army in World War II that fight the evil animals in World War II something like that yeah I can't wait to read it the next book was also brand new that came out in July and that is Sky Pirates, Echo, Quickthorn and The Great Beyond by Alex English illustrated by Mark Chambers. This one I believe is set in a city that's walled up and the main character is told that there is nothing outside the wall. It's like a bit Divergent-esque I think but yeah she believes that it's just this city and one day somebody crashes into a garden or something. I think uh, yeah a professor crashes his airship outside her bedroom window and hit suddenly her world has expanded and she now kind of has a clue to where her missing mother could be. So I think this is also another missing parent kind of middle grade and she has to go and find her mother and I'm really hoping that she finds her. I think this is the first in a series though so it might be a while before we get there but really looking forward to reading it. Brand new Sky Pirates. It sounds great. Also picked up The Whistle, The Grave and the Ghost by Brad Strickland and John Belairs. This is the 10th I think this is the 10th book in the Lewis Barnefeld series, 9th or 10th. I've explained this series in so many videos because the books keep coming out every two months. So it's like, I have to keep repeating myself, but Lewis Barnefeld, young boy who ends up living with his uncle who is a wizard and his neighbor is a witch and he 
seems to keep unleashing things and doing things that he shouldn't be doing and mischief ensues and he has to fix his mistakes. That's been the general gist of the series. I'm really enjoying them. I just finished the fifth book last month so I really need to catch up with the series actually. There's two more books to come out after this so hopefully after that I won't have to keep re-explaining the series. So yeah, I picked up this one. I always love the new covers for them. So Piccadilly Press, thank you for re-releasing all of these books and all with matching covers and everything. Ugh, love you. Then I used Books to Door to get the first six books in the Edge Chronicles series. It was £15 for all six of these books. I already have four of them. I have these four because these are some of my favourite childhood books and I do have like my original ones of these. Like these are like the new covers that started to be released and things so they'd all sort of like match. I do have the first four original ones when I was a kid. As you can see like the pages are quite yellow and these were the covers and things of them which I would have been happy continuing collecting but they did stop releasing them with these covers so I never would have had a complete collection with these so I pretty much had to re-get the first four but when I got six books for £15 that's actually a pretty good deal so I was like you know what I'm not going to pass it up. I, I'm still going to keep my original copies of these though because they mean so much to me but I do want to finish the series at some point. I only ever read the first few so I do want to finish the series and I need to collect the rest of them so I needed to get the ones with those covers. I also did pick up the seventh book at Waterstones. This wasn't part of the box set or anything, it was only the first six books unfortunately and there are like 13 books now so they've only been released with these covers so I had to get the first six so yeah, I mean, I'm not complaining because they were super cheap. So yeah, get yourself to Books to Door to get these gorgeous editions for £15. £15. I don't know what that is in dollars or anything. So then onto the young adult books that I bought. I got Cinderella is Dead by Caelan Bayron. I really wanted to read this in August, but I lost to Daughters of Unry. This actually came into the store like a week in advance or something. Like it came out quite early. I think today was actually supposed to be its book birthday. So happy book birthday, even though you did get released earlier. 200 years after Cinderella has died and all of the maidens and all of the princes have to, like well are forced to sort of pair off together. But the main character, I believe, is in love with her best friend and her best friend is a woman. Our main character runs away into the woods I think and then some things happen. I, I need to read this for myself and I can't wait to read it. I'm so excited. I really am so excited to read this. Oh, just the cover and everything is just gorgeous. Uh, I'm so tired to just slide this onto my TBR as well and make it 34 books I need to read in August. What do you think? Then I picked up Pet by Quake and Mercy, and I picked this one up because uh, Sophie Anderson, who is the author of The House with Chicken Legs and The Girl Who Speaks Bear and The Castle of Tangled Magic, uh, she recommended this and she loves it to death, so I decided to pick this one up. It's extremely short, which I was surprised at. It says here that there are no more monsters anymore, or so the children in the city of Lucille had been taught. Jam and her best friend Redemption have grown up with this lesson all their lives, but when Jam meets Pet, she begins to question what she's been told. Pet has come to hunt the evil lurking in Redemption's house. Cody did recently read this as well in one of her reading vlogs and she loved it. She said it was a new favourite. So I have high expectations for this book. I cannot wait to dive into it. And it's short because I, I think I might actually just genuinely throw it onto my August TBR and read 34 books in August. Like, Oh, I don't know if I can though, but I really want to. Then I picked up Harrow Lake by Kat Ellis. I saw a proof copy of this go around like months ago and it was like this VHS tape proof copy, which I never got a chance to get my hands on. But I did say this come out and it has yellow sprayed edges and I thought, well, if it's got sprayed edges, I have to buy it. So I don't know what this one's about, just that it looks quite terrifying. It's got this like hanging puppet here as well and it says it's Scream meets the Babadook. Now I don't really like the Babadook that much but I love Scream and it says here Lola knows all about Harrow Lake. Her famous father directed Nightjar, the cult horror movie that was filmed there. She knows about the caves beneath the fairground, the sunken graveyard, the tree in the woods that's hung with teeth. But she doesn't know about the dark past the town heights or the secrets it holds about her family. Now she finds herself in Harrow Lake and, as she searches for answers, someone or something is stalking her every move. In Harrow Lake, the truth can be the death of you. So it sounds really good and looking forward to reading a good young adult horror novel. I don't think I've actually read a good young adult horror. I don't know if I've read a young adult horror at all. So 
this will be a first for me and I'm looking forward to it. Then I picked up the fifth season and The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. And this is like the first few books in the Broken Earth series. I need to pick up book three and it looks fantastic. All the books won the Hugo Award and that's like a huge deal because not a full series winning that is just like so unheard of. But I've heard so many great things about this. This is a lot of people's favourite books. And all I really know about it is that it's like set in a very apocalyptic world. It says here that it starts with uh, the Great Red Rift across the heart of the world's soul continent, spewing ash that blots out the sun. It starts with death with a murdered son and a missing daughter. It starts with betrayal and long dormant wounds rising up to fester. This is a stillness, a land long familiar with catastrophe, where the power of the earth is wielded as a weapon and where there is no mercy. Oof, and I love the covers for them as well, so that's another good reason why I picked them up. <laughs> then I picked up Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed, and this one has blue sprayed edges. And this was supposed to be the Read and Rush group book, but I had no idea they had a group book. So I ended up picking this up just because it sounded pretty good. So this follows Amira who was apprehended at a supermarket for kidnapping a white child that she is in fact babysitting. So it starts off this chain of events and things happen from there. This is a lot of book club picks at the minute, especially the Unfriendly Black Hotties book club. So I will link their Twitter down below and I really want to try and fit this into my August TBR so that I can join in on that book club. And yeah, it just seems really good. And I think I was the last person to get the Waterstones exclusive sprayed edge edition. I don't know if there's anything else exclusive about it. But I mean, again, as I say, sprayed edges and I'm there. And finally, the last book that I got was The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune. So happy I got a copy of this because it was starting to get a bit hard to get hold of. And this one follows a man who goes to this weird house where there are children living there, I think, with very special abilities. And he has to see if they are too dangerous for the world or something like that. I don't know, I butchered that. But this was going to be in my August TBR, but I lost the round in play or TBR right, so unfortunately I'll not be reading it well anytime soon really. So it breaks my heart because I've heard nothing but great things about this, especially since a lot of people have said this is kind of like middle grade but for adults, so oh god just the premise and everything just sounds so good. So that doesn't include any of the proofs that I got approved for on NetGalley, but yeah these are, were all of the books that I got in July, which was, it's far too much, I really need to slow down, I need to stop. I need to start myself from these book hauls, it's really ridiculous. But anyway, that is my book haul for July. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a comment, let me know if you're excited about any of these books, if you've read them, you know, hype me up for them, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!